Today on Ramblings with Rebecca, I have not begun with a big, loud sing-song hello. Uh, it may shock you, but we are in fact going to discuss third generation rights. Continuing along our series, on Tuesday we discussed first generation rights. Uh, those civil and political rights that are very much focused on helping protect an individual from the freedom that or excuse me, from the tyranny of the big bad state that has the power to do evil things to you. So freedom from torture, freedom from arbitrary killing, voting rights, those kind of things. And civil and political rights very much focused on individuals and their right to participate in public life. And then on Wednesday we had second generation rights, going a step beyond individual, civil, and political into economic, social, cultural rights, things like the right to housing and health care. Uh, we discussed the fact that now we see the state not as something that's evil and doing things to you that are bad, but instead can potentially be benevolent, helping enforce rights and realize your rights in a progressive manner that's probably going to cost the state something. So we see a shift in what the state is doing, uh, moving from liberty to equality in our buzzwords of the French Revolution. Today, day three, we have fraternity, uh, groups, collective rights. Third generation rights go fairly far beyond um, the first two generations of rights. You also may remember that we talked about, even though we have this language of generation in rights that has this kind of chronological connotation, the first and gener second generations actually came about and were discussed at the same kind of time frame. And the two major covenants that make some of these rights legally enforceable under international law, the International Covenant on uh, Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, that's the second generation, and the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, the first generation treaty, those actually came into force and were adopted at the same time. Third generation rights, a little bit different. Those are very much still evolving. Um, not to say that the other two aren't still going through constant progression, but this third generation of rights does not see nearly as much attention and certainly doesn't have nearly as many legally binding mechanisms as the first two generations do. So there is more of a time element here. Third generation rights are getting into group and collective rights. Um, right to self-determination, right to economic and social development, right to a healthy environment and natural resources. Uh, communication rights, the rights to keep your own language alive, um, participate in cultural heritage, uh, intergenerational equality, equity, sustainability. And these are very much going beyond the idea of rights or something that goes to an individual, and there's a direct relationship between the state and the individual in that. Um, and this pushes, in a lot of ways, at kind of the Western assumption of rights as inherently about the individual and a person's dignity. Uh, so it doesn't fit the model as well. Um, we see it more enshrined in other places. Uh, the African Charter, for example, a regional instrument around human rights, is actually human and people's rights. So from the get-go in the African regional system of human rights, people's rights, collective rights were written into that. We don't see that in America or the European Union nearly as much. Third generation rights do not have some big legally binding treaty right now. It would be tricky for us to figure out, which is part of it. There's also just less political will, I would say. Um, but if we say there's some kind of right to intergenerational equity, right? Um, three grandkids from now, my descendant has the right to a sustainable environment. Okay, but how the heck are they going to sue me? <laughs> right, these kind of issues um, that bring some kind of questions, but then also just how much power do we give to groups? How do you define um, a group that has the right to self-determination? Does that mean every indigenous people's movement has a right to secession under international law? And a consent-based system focused around the nation state, these are pretty tricky <laughs> to figure out and to get some kind of legal mechanism. Uh, third generation rights then are, when they do exist in international law, are generally soft law. Um, those laws that are things like declarations, uh, so the Universal Declaration on Human Rights is soft law. There isn't a way to sue based purely on that document. Same kind of things with third generation rights. Um, we have the Rio Declaration, Stockholm Generations around the environment. Uh, in just 2007, we have a Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. So more and more, there are starting to be 
documents that nation states do sign on to saying what these rights are, but no, thus far, not really a clear enforcing mechanism. 